It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? They are CBS News correspondents Larry Lesseur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Ting Fu Chiang, Chief Delegate from Nationalist China to the United Nations. Both houses of Congress have now authorized the President to defend Formosa and its other areas with American forces if we find it necessary. There were differences of opinion, of course, strong ones over just which areas should be defended in the Formosa Straits. But there's never been any difference of, of opinion regarding the caliber of the man who represents nationalist China at the United Nations. Dr. Ting Fu Chiang is regarded as one of the world's most able diplomats. Dr. Chiang, how do you greet this resolution by both houses of Congress giving the president power to defend Formosa and the Pescadores and all other points necessary? I'm glad that uh, this resolution was passed and passed by such large majorities, both in the Senate and in the House. Uh, I'm glad for two reasons. One, now uh, everybody knows where USA stands. Second, today I have a very particular reason. I'm glad that US action is not made conditional upon any action which the United Nations may or may not take. Well, Dr. Tsang, do you feel that this resolution that has been passed by Congress enlarges the United States military commitment in the Far East? I think that depends largely <coughs> on future developments. Uh, of course, I, we all know the uh, resolution does not, uh, you might say, diminish U.S. Uh, commitment because uh, before the passage of the resolution, we understood that your government would help us in defending the Formosa and Pescadores. The resolution does say about approaches to Formosa or related areas. So you can say there might be a general vague enlargement of U.S. responsibilities and commitments. But factually, what will amount to, what that will amount to, will depend largely on developments. Well, speaking of developments, uh, <coughs> Dr. Chiang, would you approve of the United Nations ordering a ceasefire in the Straits of Formosa? No, I'm opposed to it. Well, then may I add, how strongly are you opposed to it? Would you be so strongly opposed to it that you would veto it? That I'm not sure, because I haven't seen the uh, warden of the resolution yet. But in principle, I do not think that the United Nations will uh, perform any service to the cause of peace by taking up a resolution on ceasefire. Well, sir, there have been reports these past few days, I don't know how true they've been, that uh, the government of nationalist China would not oppose a reasonable ceasefire. Now, were those reports inaccurate or premature or close to the truth? <coughs> If you say uh, ceasefire, a factual ceasefire, well, Miss Burdett, uh, you uh, probably uh, remember that the recent series of uh, war activities along the coast was factually started by the communists on September 3rd. All what we have to do in recent months is to f has been to defend ourselves and to retaliate. Uh, we naturally uh, will try to recover the mainland, but we know that cannot be done by uh, this kind of, uh, uh, this type of warfare. And then we do not conceive recovering the mainland in the sense of a military conquest of the mainland by force on Formosa. We do not want to fight against our own countrymen. But we will sound? fight, excuse me, I'd yes. like to finish that point. We do not wish to fight against our countrymen on the mainland. We must fight, be ready to fight with our countrymen on the mainland to free them from their oppressors. Well, would you say that a ceasefire, if ordered by the UN and accepted by <coughs> the communist Chinese, would foreclose any opportunity of you to return to the mainland from Formosa? That, uh, so far as I know, opinion 
now differs quite uh, quite a bit. Uh, I wouldn't be able to judge on that point until I see the terms of, of the resolution. Well, the resolution I, will exclude uh, the Formosa and the Pescadores and will only apply, I believe, to the islands which are just off the mainland. Yes. In other words, Kimoi and Matsu. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that uh, I will wish to be frank. One of the reasons why we are opposed to this uh, ceasefire is the point you just mentioned. Uh, w well, I wish you would uh, elaborate on that. The fact that it does exclude uh, Formosa yeah. and the Pescadores? No, I wouldn't say it excludes. It might make our uh, future plans to uh, recover the men, uh, to liberate the men uh, more difficult. Do you believe, sir, that there is any chance of Red China accepting a ceasefire and accepting a de facto ceasefire line somewhere in the Formosa Strait? This is all guess. Yes. And I must confess, <coughs> probably one guess is good as another. <coughs> but I myself feel that after the passage of the resolution by U.S. Congress, factually, I think the Chinese communists would not attempt to invade the farmers of Pescoderes. So I anticipate that uh, there will be a factual ceasefire. In that respect, I have the feeling that your president has already rendered the cause of peace a great service. When you speak of a ceasefire order by the Security Council, that is an entirely different matter. I doubt that the Commons would accept such an order. Because it comes from the United Nations? Yes, that's one thing. I think they will argue, as they have already argued, on Article 2, Section 7 of the Charter, that this matter is essentially within the domestic jurisdiction of a state. Well, actually, of course, the uh, question of the ceasefire, as it will be put before the Security Council, would be as a threat to international peace. But I'd go further on that, Dr. Tsiang. Would you approve of the uh, United Nations inviting a representative of Communist China to come to New York to debate this subject with you? No, I'm opposed to it. I think the uh, United Nations, I think any organ of the United Nations should not invite uh, anybody who has already been condemned by the United Nations as an aggressor. Well, sir, to leave... How strongly are you opposed to that? I'm very uh, strongly opposed to it. Uh, to leave Formosa out of, the, out of the picture a moment, do you believe that there is any chance that the Chinese communists will cease firing in their battle to, uh, to conquer the coastal islands? Kamoi, Matsu, and all the rest. I think there is a possibility that they will effectually cease Give firing. This, uh, you believe there is such a possibility? I think there is that possibility. Do you think that uh, Red China actually wants to get into the United Nations, Dr. Tsiang, or do they actually want more aggression? I think they want to get into the United Nations for sake of the prestige that membership in the UN confers on a state. And they figure out that aggression and membership are consistent and harmonious, and they confer have both. But Dr. Tsiang, if, if the United Nations should order a ceasefire in the Formosan Straits and also invite a representative of Communist China to come to New York. Would you consider that a step towards recognition? <coughs> that depends on future developments. I would not go so far as that. I think, no doubt, that step does confer some additional prestige on the Chinese Communists. Well, is it uh, to be taken then, sir, that the Taipei government has not made up its mind exactly how it will react to any resolution by the United Nations which might invite a representative of Communist China to come to this country? We will oppose it. Well, in other words, do you think it will be a substantive or a procedural question? Will, can you veto it? That, of course, you know, uh, that uh, point, the particular point was raised in the Security Council once <coughs> upon a time, and uh, opinions differ. I don't want to be dogmatic. Uh, some years ago, I held that it was a point of substance, but the majority member, the majority of the members held it was not a, a, a substantial question, but a, a procedural question. And a procedural question, of mm. course, is not subject to the That's veto, right. but this might also be a subject of debate should the invitation go yes. out to Communist mm -hmm. China. Well, can you tell me, Dr. Chiang, 
Just what is your considered opinion re right now regarding the possibility of the enlargement, the spreading of this war in the Formosan Straits? Is it dangerous? No, I think not. I think not. I'm convinced that the world communism will seek uh, fields for further expansion. But I observe that they usually select soft spots. I think they know that uh, Formosa is not a soft spot. And at least there are other spots much softer to Formosa. So I uh, do not uh, feel alarmed about large-scale activities in the Straits of Formosa. Well, Dr. Song, what else, what other areas would you regard as a soft spot? Well, the countries bordering on the south of China, all that region is uh, dangerous weak, politically and militarily. And of course, in the past, uh, China has already done considerable expansion in that direction and uh, has considerable fruits to show past experience as well as the resources that the region would attract. Do you think if there were a ceasefire in the Formosan Straits, mm -hmm. they might be tempted to uh, use aggression someplace else? Then? Uh, the two are separate. Whether there is ceasefire or not, their the intention to extend southwards is a permanent fact. Well, thank you very much, Dr. John. It's always a great pleasure for you to come here and talk to us. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Ting Fu Chiang, chief delegate from Nationalist China to the United Nations. They say everyone notices the watch on your wrist. To be well dressed, every detail must conform, including your watch. Now, Longines makes a watch to suit every need to fill every taste. And the choice of styles and of models is almost unlimited. For ladies, Longines creates superb examples of the jeweler's art. Exquisite in taste and finish, perfect for every occasion. For men, Longines produces watches for every requirement. Watches for dress and for sport. Longines automatic watches, the most advanced in the world. Waterproof and shock-resistant watches for rugged service. Longines chronograph watches for sportsmen and scientists. And every Longines watch, whether for a lady or for a gentleman, is made to the unique standards of excellence which have won for Longines 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And this statement is true throughout the world. The Longines watch on your wrist is just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world, the watch of highest reputation and prestige. And yet, surprisingly, you may own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers, see Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Lecoultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Lecoultre, division of Longines Whitnor. <clears throat> Fight communism, send truth dollars to the crusade for freedom. <laughs>